Hey guys, how are you guys tonight, this wonderful Monday evening? Um, so it's just been kind of laid back today. Um, of course I work today and, and, um, you know, just had a pretty basic Monday, nothing major, but, um, I want to talk about something today that I think um, is vitally important that we um, share with not just our our kids but young adults. Um, whoever doesn't know me, I'm Carla Nicole. I'm a wisdom coach, so I'm constantly, you know, helping other people um, to be the best them that they can be, of course. But outside of that, I think it's important that um, I share with you guys the importance of giving this message to young adults, hey, to young adults, to young people, um, the upcoming generations. Um, so, just take a second with me and just kind of follow what I'm saying. So, you know, in school, we teach our children how um, important it is to have A's and B's, um, preferably A's, of course, right? We want our kids to, to strive, to excel, to be the best, which I think absolutely is necessary. But one thing that I think we don't stress enough is the importance of the comeback. Um, I think sometimes when we only applaud our children doing well in school and we never applaud the times when they failed and made a comeback, um, it's just giving the message that, you know, you don't have any failures in life, which I think is a very huge misconception. I think it's vitally important that we teach our children the importance, and not just our own, but the younger generation, the importance of the comeback. Um, you know, my dad, when I was young, used to impress upon me how, you know, at that time when I was growing up, there was a lot of especially in my culture, my dad, my uncles, my male cousins, man, they were really into boxing. And um, my dad would say to me, you know, when you're up against the ropes in life, you always got to fight back, which is true. Um, but I think that sometimes or sometimes along the way, as we are raising our children and encouraging young adults and helping them I think sometimes we're missing the major message, which is what do you do when you come across F's in life? F's. Um, life isn't always perfect. So we're going to have those moments where financially we may have an F. Um, we may have an F in our relationships. Uh, we may have an F in our you know work environment uh, there's all kinds of ways that we can get f's in life and i think sometimes we might not really think about it but these f's happen you know and i think it's important that we tell the younger generation that even if you have an f in life what are you going to do to resolve that f how are you going to try to make sure you come up with a plan not to have the F happen again. What are you gonna do to improve and make sure that you avoid having this same scenario come back up in life over and over and over again? See, as adults um, and as we age, we kind of have been through some things, right? We've been through relationships, uh, maybe marriages, maybe just long-term. We've been in uh, friendships, right? We've had friends that we've had for years. We've had friends that we've had for months, maybe not that long, or friends we've just come to know. And um, so because we kind of had those relationships, 
we understand certain things about how important it is we choose based upon certain things we look for in a friendship. First of all, privacy. How important is privacy to you in your relationships with your friends? Uh, how much is privacy important to you in your relationships? How much is privacy important to your relationships and families? All of these things are essential to make sure that you're being mindful of, right? When you get involved with relationships, right? Um, but we do have moments in different relationships where we fail miserably. We either fail because we can't get along or we fail by picking the wrong people or picking people that may not resonate with us or they may be toxic or we're not sure what's going on with them. There's all kinds of stuff going, around, going awry. And we get involved with people and we're like, man, this person just is working against me or we really don't have a good, solid relationship. Hey, Arkeny. So, you know, when you have those things going on, it's frustrating. And you're like, man, I just want to have something to where I have a relationship that is resonating with my life, fits my life. Well, first of all, that goes based upon who, who are you choosing? <laughs> You have to be mindful. You're in control of who you allow in and out of your life. So you have to be more mindful as to what type of person um, will resonate in your life. This is, this, is, this is a lesson that we learn, right? When we're young, when we're kids, we don't know a lot of those things. We just kind of learn, hit, do what we do. And then we bump ourselves up against the wall and, and we get in relationships. We get in fights and all kinds of stuff. You're like, wow. How did I end up with this person? Or how did I get this person in my life? How did I allow certain people in? And, and then we have to say, well, how do we make a comeback from the scenarios we're in also? What do we do? How do we make sure that in those relationships that we have, how do we make sure that we don't keep inviting that same energy? Again, it goes back to Fs in life. That's an F. That's a failure. So how do we make sure that in in, a, in the future, what type of person are we going to invite in our life? What is our partner choicing looking like? Are we still picking the same type of women or men that we're in, involved with? Are we still picking the same type that didn't work for years and years and years? So we keep doing the same thing over and over again. The reason I'm saying this is very important for the younger generation is because if we don't sit down and start to impart in the younger generation the importance of resolution the importance of choices we're going to have a generation of confusion a generation just winging it not having any type of real understanding or standards in their life and then what happens is there's all kinds of mishaps misunderstandings and all kinds of craziness going on so why i say it's important that we line up and teach our children well, look, I've had some failures. You know, I sit down with my son. My son is, you know, 12. I've sat down with my daughter and I said, hey, look, let me tell you something. I'm not always perfect. I've made some mistakes. I've had some mishaps. I've had made some missteps. I've picked some maybe gentlemen that maybe I shouldn't have involved with. I've picked some friends that maybe weren't so good for me. And, um, and I sit them down and I explain to them the lessons I learned from certain bad calls or maybe calls that maybe weren't um, favorable. And I think that it's important that we do that. Um, the reason why I say that is because children are so applauded and so celebrated for A's in school and doing well in school, but yet they're never really complimented for having a failing grade or not doing so good. And I always tell my kids, if they come home with a bad grade, I'm like, well, what are you going to do about it? You earned it. <laughs> this grade right here, you earned it. So what are you going to do to improve this grade? Am I going to see this grade next quarter? Or are you going to change it? What did you not do to earn this? And I think it's important that we talk to our children about failing. Because failing is huge in life. There's people that had failed marriages, failed at parenting, failed at being a decent child to their elder parent, failed at being good in friendships, failed 
all the way across the board, made some horrible choices, did some horrible things. And yet it doesn't define you. So what do you do in order to shift out of that failure and become better than you were? This is something that is very important that we sit down and talk to our children about. When I sat my son down and said, hey, you think I never got written up at work? I've been at my job for 20 years. You think in that 20 year relationship, career relationship, you think I've never made a mistake? You're wrong, son. Come here, let me show you something. So I sat him down. I let him look at a write-up for my job. And I let, I said, see these numbers right here? I wasn't putting forth the best effort. Yeah, I got written up at work. Oh, what? I'm not supposed to tell my son my failures? I'm dumb. I would be stupid to sit up here and be like, oh, I've gotten A's and everything. No, the hell I haven't. I made some fucked up decisions. So for me, I had to sit him down and say, hey, son, come over here, have a seat. I want to show you something. Do you think I've never had bad grades in school? I've had F's before. I'm not perfect. I've made some mistakes. I've had F's in credit. I've had F's in paying bills. I've had definitely F's in love affairs. F's in friendships. Do you think I ain't never made no mistakes before? No, son, you're going to sit down and get this work. You're going to understand what it takes to, to what it takes to make a comeback when you do fail. What do you do when you take an L, son? Are you going to sit back and let the L define you? Or are you going to do some things differently? If you come home with a bad grade, I'm not going to beat the shit out of you for what? <laughs> that F you earned or D you earned or low grade you earned, you earned it. That should beat you up enough. I ain't got to put my hands on you. But what I do expect is that I don't see that again. And that's what I think we need to teach our kids. We ain't got to beat the shit of our kids because they get Fs and Ds. We need to see well, what's your comeback look like. Am I ever going to see this again? You earned it. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, like I did, I sat my son down and said, look, these are my numbers. I had low numbers. I was producing low. I wasn't giving everything I had to my job. I said, see, son, let me tell you something. When you get a low grade in school, you know, you still have a meal as long as your mom is working and doing what she needs to do. If I get an F at work and they take my job from me, we don't eat, son. <laughs> the lights don't stay on, son. You know what I'm saying? We lose the vehicle. We lose the home. We lose everything. If I fail in my job and I don't produce, it's going to cost us more than me getting in trouble with, with, at home. I'm, I'm, it's going to cost me. So I think it's important that we sit our kids down and tell them everything isn't always peaches and cream, baby boy. You got to understand that. I, I love that you do great in school. That's a great thing. But I need to see where your grit's at. Do you know what to do if you got an F? Not just in school. What about an F on the, on, uh, when you're playing golf? What, what if your tire blows out when you're driving your car? Do you know how to change a tire? What, what are you going to do if, if something bad happens? Do you know what to do? Do you know how to problem solve? These are things that are just as important, if not more important, when it comes to life. Because real talk, failures will happen in this lifetime, whether we want them to or not. It's vitally going to happen. I'm sorry to be the person of bad news, but I'm here to tell you. Life isn't always great, grand, and beautiful. There's moments when you're going to have, there's moments when you won't. So you need to know what kind of grit and grind you have about yourself. So I just wanted to share something with you. You've got young people in your life that you're close to, or you have young adults that you're, you're cool with. Hey, pull them to the side. Tell them about your failures, man. We always want to talk about how great we are. Let's tell them about the failures. We need to make that just as important. Let them know, man, listen, I had times when I didn't have everything in alignment. I wasn't doing perfect across the board. No one is. We're all human. We make mistakes. So what are we telling our kids so they don't think that this picture perfect life happens just by happenstance? No, you got to do some work. You got to make some changes. You got to make some, some planning. You got to prepare. You got to do a lot of things. And in order for us to concern ourselves with our kids, we have to make sure we're letting the, the younger generation know and understand that no matter what, we have to impart in them that there's going to be times when you fail, man. Fail. 
there's times when I could have failed as a mom. There's times I could have failed, like I said, at a lot of things. But what's my comeback look like? Because real talk, if I put my mind to something, I bet you I'll never see an F again. Not not on this, not at the same thing. No, because I'm going to make sure I don't ever have to deal with this again. So it's important that we teach our young and teach our kids and teach the young people. Failure will happen. Just like I told my son, I said, you think the man Elon Musk that you respect so much that makes the Tesla, you don't think that man failed? You don't think he's had any failures? You don't think so? Uh, I beg to differ. <laughs> I beg to differ. Trust me. If for him to have the vision he has to become what he's become, he's had to make a lot of massive mistakes. In those mistakes, though, what did he learn? What did he how did he address those mistakes? What did he do? What was his grit like? Did he have plans put in place to make sure he doesn't ever make the same mistake twice? See, this is where it gets kind of sticky with our kids. We got to sit them down and say, look, oh, you think it's perfect around here. Oh, you think just when you turn on the light switch, the lights just come on. <laughs> oh, you think because as soon as you turn that faucet on, the water just flows out. No, I'm making pre preparations to make sure that these things happen. I have to pay to make sure those happen. Those things happen. I have to make sure that I'm being responsible. And if I don't, it's going to cost me and you. Because I'm not just responsible for just me, see. I'm responsible for you and me. See, right now, you're just responsible for you. So at school, what you earn, whether it's grades or certificates or whatever you're gaining by going to school and achieving, those are things that affect you. But if I don't succeed, if I don't deliver, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, guess what? It's going to cost not just me, but you too. And so I have to be even double mindful. And when your sister was here, I had to be triple mindful. And I'm still having to be triple mindful because she's still my daughter, right? So these are things that I think is important we teach the younger generation. Everything isn't automatic. There's going to be many failures. Many. And in the failures, though, is where we gain character. We learn how to problem solve. We learn what it takes to survive. Survival of the fittest is not just by happenstance. Survival of the fittest is vital that our young people understand. Make sure you share this video, man, because I don't think a lot of times we really think about the importance of, you know, talking to the youth and telling them the failures and what we had to go through and some of the challenges and in, in the hard times because we we want to keep our children focused on school but like i have to tell you guys and remind you when they leave school and everything's on them even their self-preservation and their livelihood and where you know all of those things are going to be on them then if they don't know there's no failure or anything can happen then um, we're not really preparing them like we should. I hope I helped somebody today. Again, I just wanted to share with you what I shared with my son. You know, I wanted to tell him, hey, look, you know, we, we have to be mindful about what we receive. We have to be mindful of what we do. And we have to be excited about understanding there's things in life where we're going to not always be successful. Sometimes we're going to fail. It's just what it is. There's going to be times and moments I fail as a daughter to my dad. There's going to be times I fail as a lover to my man. There's going to be times I fail as a bestie to my best friend. There's going to be times I fail in my friendships, in my sisterhoods, in my job. It's what it is, man. But what I do to try to make sure that in those failures that I make a comeback and I think the comeback is vitally important and we should always stress and strive to being very important to that child and to our youth that if you're not mindful of how important it is to stay focused on, on not just earning the F, but learning from the F, 
earning a, a failing grade is inevitable. We're going we're gonna to fail at something. It's just what it is because we're not perfect. But are you learning from them? Do you continue to get them? Do you continue to get failed marriage after failed marriage after failed marriage? Do you keep getting failed relationship after failed relationship? Failed friendship after failed friendship? Your family don't come around. You don't get along with your family. I mean, are all of these things happening to the point where it's continual? Because if that's the case, you got to start looking at yourself. Like, why does this keep showing up? Why do I keep, why do I have this scenario over and over again? Stop. Take a look at self. Look at you. Pay attention. Pay attention to you. What am I doing that I need to restore inside myself? Do I have any type of real, um, true resolutions to making things get better? Do I have that? Because if I don't, then at the end of the day, I'm going to continue to have this scenario over and over again. Thing about life is it's lessons always. So when we fail at something, the lesson should be taught how to improve and make sure that we don't keep having the lesson. How do I restore it? How do I make it better? What can I do to improve it? And so when we have that, then we can start to say, okay, to avoid this from happening again, let me come up with a plan to make sure I do this better the next time. Again, I think it's important that we share with our kids about failure, you know, um, and we can also fail in our health, right? We can have heart failure. We can have all kinds of failures in life, but are we improving our health by watching what we eat again um it's important like i said there's so many things i can go into but i just wanted to stop and just give you guys this and tell you to share this is is because this is very important um share with your kids and share with the younger adults how you failed and then tell them your process and how you improved from the failure, how you came out, how you sprouted as a rose from the concrete. What did you do to improve? Because I think it's something that our younger generation will definitely benefit from. And not just that, I think our younger generation just needs to hear it. Because they only hear the applause when they're doing well. They don't know what to do when they're not. And so it's like, hey, you know, I see you're, you're, you're falling short here. So what are you going to do to change this? Sometimes we, can, we need to nudge them and it's okay to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I hope I helped somebody tonight. Um, it's very important that we share the trials and tribs just as much as we share the joys because in life it comes in waves. It's all about balance, right? So if we share this and tell people, the truth about it, I think um, I think we can make it everything a better place. And we can also make ourselves better by being honest about honest and open that we're not perfect, that we got imperfections, that we got flaws, that we make mistakes. I think it just makes us better. And um, it also allows us to really look at self and really see, hey, I'm not perfect. But, you know, I, I do understand that there's ways to improve. And in my understanding of that, I can actually help someone else see that they can do the same thing, if that makes sense. So I'm out of here, guys. I just wanted to share that with you guys tonight. Um, so make sure you share this video. And um, if you haven't yet um, subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure to do that. My YouTube channel is Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. So make sure you, you go over there and subscribe. Um, it's very important. All right, guys, I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great day, guys. Good night.